Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I was able to add a next generation firewall to my home lab for under $100. If you have been following our series on this channel, we are building a home lab to learn information security skills. And part of that is having our security onion for monitoring. And I also added a firewall. And a firewall is a very important component of our installation. So last time we had PFSense. I have since upgraded PFSense to OpenSense. I did this mostly because OpenSense integrates with Sensei, which is a plugin that you can add to OpenSense and it gives you next generation firewall features. So what is a next generation firewall? According to Cisco here, a next generation firewall is a network security device that provides capabilities beyond a traditional stateful firewall. We get features like application awareness, control, integrated intrusion prevention, and cloud-delivered threat intelligence. These are the features that I was lacking when I was running on my firewall in PFSense. So I have since went ahead and installed OpenSense. So how did I install OpenSense and why did I have to spend money on it? OpenSense is a free open source firewall that you can install that is just like PFSense. And in addition to that, you can add Sensei, which is right here. So the first part that I did was I went to eBay. I prefer my firewall to run on physical hardware because my goal is to really mimic what really happens in the real world. And also I prefer it to run on physical hardware because I want to run more features and I want it to be independent of my virtualization infrastructure. I bought a Checkpoint T160-4600 of eBay for $60. You might be wondering why Checkpoint? Because I found out that you can install PFSense on it and I realized if you can install PFSense, OpenSense should also run on it because OpenSense and PFSense both come from the same source code. So because of that, I found an installation guide on how to install PFSense on Checkpoint. So I'll link this to the description. I followed this to the T. You burn the image to Rufus, then after that you can boot to your OpenSense. So during my installation process, this is what it looked like. I had a laptop connected to my Checkpoint firewall that I bought off eBay for $60. And then I was able to sign into it and actually install using that guide that I showed you. From there, I went to the Sunny Valley Networks website and I found that they have a guide on how to actually install their tool on OpenSense. And this is a very straightforward guide that you can follow without any issues. I followed it straightforward. And what they do is once you install your OpenSense using that guide that I showed you, then you'll be able to install the Sensei module that they, they have for you. And here, as you can see, this is what you get when you install it. So some of you may be curious, why do I need Checkpoint? To be honest, you don't need to have physical hardware. In that case, you can have all this set up for free, almost 100% for free. And all you need to do is some place to install as virtual machines. The only reason why I did this is because I prefer physical hardware for my firewall because I expect this device to be doing more than just this part of the lab. Otherwise, you can install everything as virtual machines, even in virtual box. So after that, this is what I have after the whole setup. And like we spoke about, this allows us to have application control. What you're looking at here on my screen are some of the features that you will get if you go ahead and install the Sensei plugin from Sunny Valley Networks. I, you have app categorization. This is live, as you can see, it's changing with time. It's actually refreshing in the back, background. It will give you the categories of the traffic that it's seeing. You'll be able to see uh, the app breakdown. This is very important for those people who are in production environment in a network. If you are curious about what is really going on, how are my users interacting with my applications, you'll be able to see the breakdown here. And this is really, really good. Let's go to our reports here. These reports can be very, very important for people, especially if you are someone who works in security. You can see up traffic by interfaces of your firewall. You can see local uh, server ports that are mostly used, and this is really, really helpful. And then the most important part is, let's go to the configuration part. This is where you decide what you want to do. And in this case, as you can see, you get different options on what to actually monitor. In this case, I'm using routed uh, layer 3 mode reporting and blocking. This is very important because I can now block specific traffic based on how I configure this firewall. 
you even get the cloud threat intelligence. Remember, according to our definition, a next generation firewall is threat intelligence from the cloud. And as you can see here, I have the cloud threat intelligence that's actually set up here. Another component that you can do is you can set up your policies. And this is very important because you can define how you want your firewall and how much restrictions you can provide. In this case, I have it enabled on the default. If I click on the edit here, uh, with the free option, without paying anything, you get the essential security here. These features are going to be free to you. So I highly encourage anyone who is watching this, who is also setting up a lab with us, to maybe try OpenSense, whether it's a virtual machine or not, and then install the Sensei plugin in your lab. And you get block malware activity, uh, block phishing servers, all these will be for free, the essential kit here. Then if you want to end up paying for the advanced features that's up to you and you can actually end up getting even more capability but i think that even the free features are worth your time in checking it out so after that you can get go to your app control in your app control you can decide what kind of applications to allow and disallow and actually monitor as well then you also have web control in my web control here as you can see for most com companies they will have something like a moderate configuration this is really, really good for people who are learning because when you go to a work environment, you will see a setup like this where employers will pay for these features on more expensive hardware and stuff like that. But in this case, we're getting it all almost for free. And as you can see here, you can even get high control if you wanted to. Uh, you can make it permissive where everything is allowed. If I go to high control, I even now block more things like blogs, chat features, and everything like that. If I leave it at moderate, I just block adult content, some advertisement and ad, ad tracking. These are features that I think are very, very helpful for us. And we can even see the status here. And then we have a dashboard that is going to give us what is really happening right now, which is the same thing as our reports when, that we check on. You can even set up this so that your reports get emailed to you at a regular interval. That can be helpful. So in the morning when you get to work, you can get your report from the previous day and you can drink coffee while analyzing your environment. This is the visibility that we really want because as you all have seen, we spend more time chasing alerts here in PFSense, uh, trying to figure out what is really going on, what did we detect, but really security starts here at the perimeter with our firewall and this is really, really important for us. So just a quick recap here, you can install this as a virtual machine, as a virtual appliance, 100% for free. If you want to have a hardware, you can install it on something like a checkpoint firewall, or you can install it on any hardware that supports PFSense or OpenSense. It doesn't really matter. So as you can see, this is what we now have installed in our lab. So this is our physical connection. This is now my LAN, WAN, and this is how everything is connected. So if you have any questions about how to set up everything, please do not hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, follow the configurations in the description below and I will see you next time.